geographical location plays a critical role in South Africa on one's access to resources and services in this country. Inequality and systematic exclusion of majority of citizens in South Africa continues to be a reality 27 years into democracy. My name is Isasi Pingo Simjingi, and I am your host here at Young Researchers Hub, where science and the public become one. Today, I'm having a conversation with Mr. Lu Vosiwisa, who hails from Guantlabane, Kukajan. He is a senior employment service practitioner, worked as a police officer for 10 years, former Cambridge Institute, a situation chairperson of Pop Crew, co founder and former chairperson of Ulucha Society Development Foundation. He completed his Bachelor's of Social Science Honours in Industrial Relations at the University of Forte, presented his paper at, in 2018 at the South African Sociological Association Conference. And today he is currently registered for his master's at the University of Wadrastrand, focusing on management and governance, public and development sector monitoring and evaluation. Mr. Liz Siwisa, welcome, sir, and thank you very much for taking your time to have a conversation with us. Uh, may you please greet the audience and just do a brief background on your study. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Isa. Uh, greeting to everyone who has uh, joined us today. As Isa has already mentioned, my name is Lubo Siwisa. Um, I am a graduate. Um, is a, a, I think to save also time because we have already exhausted uh, 10 minutes, if I'm not wrong, let me just uh, take people through my, my study uh, as to what led me to even think of this study. I hail from a rural background rural areas of Willow Vale, uh, Chaban in particular. And many a times we hear stories, or uh, especially stories relating to gender-based violence, taking a long time to be resolved if uh, they get to be resolved. So uh, in, uh, as I was conducting my research when I was completing my honors degree with the University of Forte, I decided to do something that would be meaningful in this regard. Um, so my study basically uh, was focusing on those charged with the responsibility to investigate cases that uh, relate to gender-based violence. However, as I was about to do that, I realized that their scope is not limited to only gender-based violence. Importantly, their scope is also extended to protection of uh, the young ones, which is the children. So the unit uh, that I focused on is the South African Police Service Unit called uh, FCS. It's Family Violence, Child Protection, and the Sexual Offenses Unit. So the study basically, um, I employed uh, I employed um, uh, sorry this in the in the study I I I wanted to get the in depth uh, the in depth. Uh, 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 information from the investigating officers. So my sample had to be divided into two institutions as a comparison. As I said, my focus was to understand why the cases in the rural setting are slower. However, uh, to better do that, I then made a comparison between East London uh, FCS. FCS, you will understand that FCS is a region, meaning if it is a region, it covers a number of police station jurisdictions. It's not that there is one area that covers just um, an area with no police stations. 
For example, Butterworth, when you look at Butterworth, Butterworth has got um, Dujwa, Gajane, Tendane, Kai Bridge, and Namakwe as the police stations uh, under the cluster Butterworth. So FCS office covers all those areas, just like in East London, it covers your Kunubi, Beacon Bay, Cambridge, East London police station, with the exception of Mdanzane, because Mdanzane has got its own FCS unit. So my aim here was to understand the effectiveness, uh, the effective implementation of FCS policy, uh, comparing both Butterworth and East London. So I don't know if that will be a background enough and then we can continue and listen to your questions. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Sumisa, for taking us through. And I would understand that there was a reason um, or a particular problem you had seen for you to get to this point. And I want us to take us a clear speak uh, through your problem statement as to what led you to pinpointing exactly to this particular area, because you could have picked other parts within the FSS um, in terms of your research. Oh, thank you, Isa. Uh, you will understand, I think, uh, even though that study was conducted in 2017, uh, the study was conducted against the background that in South Africa, entirely South Africa, the scale of uh, gender-based violence, especially rape and killing of women, um, is, 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 is a problem on its own. So my, my study was triggered basically by the rising numbers. And whenever you, 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 you watch your television or whatsoever in every news, you will always see people being frustrated. My case was not resolved. Uh, and having looked at the statistics at the time, because the reason why I will keep saying at the time is because statistics may have changed a bit. And uh, you will understand that South Africa, again, is, 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 is uh, operating in a global community. So there are also uh, United Nations uh, uh, con uh, conventions to, 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 to observe, and also legislations in South Africa have been uh, uh, established and 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 there are other innovations that have uh, um, been devised by our government. One of the greatest uh, uh, one of the greatest uh, innovations, for example, is FCS itself. Having looked at that, why would we fail to 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 address these issues if? we have these innovations, especially in the rural areas. And another problem that uh, triggered me to concentrate on this uh, side of rural areas is because when you look at the urban areas, the urban areas seem to be having less complaints about, the, uh, about the, their cases being resolved as compared to our rural settings. So something said that there must be a problem here. So hence, I decided to concentrate on, 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 the, on the comparison between Butterworth and East London. Okay, thank you, Mr. Suisa. Uh, my next question will then, can you please take us through what are your main findings then into this problem that you were researching on? Okay, thank you, Isa. Uh, without wasting time, let me give you a little bit of, uh, let me be elaborative when I come to that. First of all, when it comes to Butterworth, let me give uh, my audience a, a picture of Butterworth. Butterworth is um, 
is, is, is operating in a rural setting, first of all, with, uh, at the time, they had only 10, um, they had only, only 10 investigative officers. And you will, you, will, you will understand that this is a specialized unit. By specializing, it means that you are an expert in the field. You are an expert in the field and you are unlike those who are working at the police station, meaning general detectives at the police station, you specializing in the in, 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 in three main cases, uh, cases that involve rape, which is dominant in the area, and also cases that involve children, and also domestic violence. Those are the expectations. So as per the policy, and you look at East London, East London had um, at least 16 detectives with the jurisdiction, when you look at the radius, which is way smaller than that of Butterworth. So I will just summarize these findings based on that. When you go to um, Butterworth, there was a frustration on the policy implementers, the people, the, the people who are supposed to be doing the actual job. The frustration is mostly on the infrastructure of the areas they serve. They made, um, for example, when you drive from Butterworth, which is where their office is, and you go to Dujua, you travel 35 kilometers from Dujua to Willowy, you travel, um, you travel uh, 30 kilometers. And so is from uh, Butterworth to, to, to Kendane, from Butterworth to Ngamakwe. Those are the only third road that they have. The rest, should you be off those roads, you are going to deep rural areas, roads that are not maintained. So that was their, uh, that, that in, in the findings, I found that uh, they were very frustrated by the infrastructural situation, especially the roads. And also you will understand that in the rural areas, another thing that frustrates them, once it's dark, they cannot work because many areas, in, in, as much as they have lights, um, they have electricity. It's only limited to households. There are no street, street lights and there are no roads between the houses. As compared to East London, wherein you find streets, street names. However, even in East London, uh, the, the study found that even though the infrastructure in East London is better than in Butterworth, in East London, they do find problems when it comes to locating, uh, especially the perpetrators, because most of the times people who are in, 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 in our townships are moving around. And you may find a person in, in Duncan Village today, but this person is not necessarily from Duncan Village, it's from PE. And the people in the area don't even know the, um, the, 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 the history of this individual. Unlike in the rural settings, the police of Butterworth were not having that problem much. But their problem is, 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 is a contrary to, their, to this one, because they are when perpetrators commit crime in, in the rural settings, they run away whether to other rural areas or to mostly Cape Town. I'm sorry to, to the people of Cape Town, mostly areas like Cape Town, big cities, where they feel like, okay, you, you, you've done something in the rural areas and so on. And another thing that I found, the resourcing in, in Batwith is, 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 is um, is at, a, at a, a worrying state as compared to that one of, of East London. Even though in East London, they have 16, 16 detectives, the study found that the detective who had many dockets there had plus minus 20 active dockets. While in Butterworth, the person who had minimum dockers to investigate was 70. So you can tell the difference, which shows that their frustration now on the side of Butterworth is that whenever they carry dockers, time is always against them. And the element of specializing is, 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 is then compromised. 
So those are partly the findings of the study. Um, thank you, Mr. Suisa. Um, what I'm finding from your research is that one's geographical location determines the kind of services they receive in this country. And of course, that dates back into our historical background as I was reading your thesis. So with these challenges, what were some of your recommendations in trying to mitigate the situation? Yes, we already have the infrastructure problem. Yes, um, there's police station, uh, 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 the resources are very low, but what then do we do in trying to make sure our people are safe while we're still waiting on government to provide enough resources and infrastructure? Oh, okay. Thank you, Isa. I, I like the fact that you are saying while waiting, because um, as much as the study was concentrating on the implementation of FCS policy, it turned out on the findings that the, the most frustrating thing is not in the capacity of the South African police service to change. That is the unfortunate part, because they are operating in areas that they, are, they don't have resources to make roads. They don't have resources to change the situation of our rural settings. However, one of the recommendations um, th that came out of the study is, 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 um, is, is that if, at least in Butterworth, the number of detectives can at least be 20 at the time, uh, the reason why I always say at the time, it is because that was at least two years back. If they can have at least uh, more detectives in terms of the resources and more vehicles. And, and again, the issue of uh, vehicles was not a problem only in, in Butterworth, even though it was worse in Butterworth than East London. So one of the recommendations is that there is what is called uh, in the South African Police Services SAPS 108, which means it's wherein government gives a police officer resources to be safeguarded by that police officer 24-7, meaning that if it's a vehicle, if there would be borrowed vehicles, they must not book them back to the station and take their private vehicles and so sort, because it would save them time and have enough time to respond as prompt as possible to cases if they would have vehicles staying with them 24 seven and then uh, means must be devised to ensure that they are utilized solely for that. That is one of the recommendations. Uh, and also some of the issues were that the police officers, you understand that in our days, everything that we do, we must record. Even when they go to court, it's something that they have recorded. So it turned out that they do not have gadgets. So if at least uh, FCS investigators can be given gadgets so that they have their own laptops with treaty cards, each and everyone, they can even respond quickly in receiving the dockets at the police stations. And again, it's a, a, one of the things that was frustrating uh, for them is, is that the reporting channels, uh, when it comes to, to cases particularly of rape, is, 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 is that it takes time for a case to, to, to come to the attention of the investigating unit called FCS. So that is another recommendation that came out of the study that this is something that needs to be reviewed so that the reporting is, 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 is is directly from the victim and straight to FCS. And there were many recommendations. That is why you hear, you see me trying to chase time. And, 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 and also, uh, when you look at uh, the, 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 the issue of uh, offices, the issues of offices, that is an infrastructure, at least that would be somehow, even not directly, be in the capacity and ability of the state called, uh, in fact, South African Police Service to at least provide these units with accommodation that is conducive enough for such sensitive cases. 
Uh, that is one of the things that the study found that they, even the office uh, doesn't give hope that you are in an office that carries um, dockets of this nature. That is another thing. Uh, I think those are but uh, some of, of, of the recommendations that the study imposed. Um, thank you, Mr. Suiza. Then my next question will be, with your main findings and recommendation, um, what other areas would you say other researchers need to tap into in trying to help um, the communities, the F S FCS department in, in mitigating these challenges um, in, in terms of moving forward that yes, you've researched on this part, but what are other areas that still need more depth in order for us to come up with a holistic um, approach um, in terms of our solutions? I think there are plenty. First of all, uh, is, uh, let's, uh, let's appreciate platforms such as this because this is uh, a very sensitive topic in South Africa for honors level. Because I conducted the study at honors level, you will understand the limitation, the limit in, in terms of even uh, how much of pages of the research and so on, the time that you have in conducting this research. Uh, I would love scholars to, 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 to look into many matters. Yeah? For example, the resourcing itself is a matter of, it's a matter that, 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 that needs um, to be researched more not only limited to, to FCS, to all other institutions linked with this office, you'll understand that this office works directly with offices as such as uh, social development, uh, offices such as um, NPA, those are the stakeholders working with the office. And you will find situations um, wherein you go to the social development and social workers don't have vehicles. These are the issues uh, that, that kill the, the fabric of, of, of our institutions because our institutions don't exist in Bisho and Pretoria. They, they are given life by our people who are working the ground. And believe me, you, these are the people who, who have knowledge. You will you, 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 you also, uh, since you, have, you had a prerogative of reading the study, you will understand that even the officers working for FCS are taken to courses, which is done adequately. I, I, I applaud it for uh, the, the service for that. However, if then the resources do not match the caliber of the people we have and, and, and they are overloaded, it's, it becomes a problem. Another area that I think would also be expanded in the study is the number of female uh, investigating officers in these institutions. That is another worrying factor uh, because you find in Butterworth there were many male investigators than females and so is East London. That was then, uh, but these are the areas that a person can also uh, delve into. And also the livelihood of women in our rural settings. When you look at the reasons, perhaps even though it has not been researched, I, this is an assumption from my side, the reason rural areas have become vulnerable to cases such as rape, it's because we have elderly people who are residing with grandchildren while they are the mother of their grandchildren and parents of their great, great uh, grandchildren are busy uh, looking for jobs and for economic survival in the urban settings. So criminals do understand these gaps. So there is also there some gap uh, to, in fact, some knowledge that can be uh, developed in that space. Thank you, Mr. Suiza. So um, I was just checking on our chat box. Uh, we have a question. Actually, it's two-folded. Um, this is from Simedi. 
Um, Sinatisa is asking, how does your study become relevant to South African civic, civic human rights as a democratic values of the state? Secondly, why did you choose to compare cases from these two regions? Um, the question is coming because you did not necessarily um, describe East London. So that's where he, um, Sinatisa is coming from with the question as to why did you compare to these two reasons? And also, how is your study contributing to the civic um, human rights um, for the democratic South Africa? <laughs> hey, Steady said that is so like you. <laughs> uh, let me let me tackle the, the second one first. Because the first one, you'll understand that is very complex. Uh, say, when you look at the resourcing in South Africa at large, people are moving from rural areas to reside in the urban areas because they, they perceive the urban areas to be well resourced as compared to rural areas. So when you look at East London, which is not so far from Butterworth, East London and Butterworth is 100 kilometers apart. So I concentrated on these two because there's not even a single town in between them. The other one is in the former Siskai and the other one is in the former Trans Sky. And when you look at also the, the nature, the, I would say how East London is organized. And you look at how Butterworth is organized. Butterworth has got dams that it serves. Whereas East London, you would argue that it has got uh, suburbs and fewer rural settings that it itself. In terms of the infrastructure, East London is predominantly urban. And you'd understand that for a, the police officer to execute his duties, especially investigating, he will need to drive to the victim, come back from the victim to look for witnesses, from witnesses, you go to, they, they will go then to look for the perpetrator after gathering all the information necessary to, 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 to start looking for a perpetrator. So that is happening smoothly in East London as compared to Butterworth, because for Butterworth to travel from their office to the first rural area, it's time consuming. By the time they get to the next uh, witness, already the, the, the time has lapsed or they are receiving a call on another police station, which is a little bit far from there. Uh, so I chose these two because uh, in terms of infrastructure, they differ. And because of our history of urban areas being prioritized, uh, as compared to our rural areas. The first question, which I have converted to be the second one. Obviously, the human rights, uh, even though I didn't get into details of that uh, because of the limitations I had, of, obviously. Those are the other issues, as I would say, because I don't want to to be vague in answering this question. I want us as scholars in this platform to look into that. What then does it mean to our human rights? What, what does, uh, how does this, uh, this uh, the ineffectiveness or how does uh, a lack of, 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 of resourcing in this institution provoke our, our own human rights? Whether you are in the urban setting, whether you are in the rural areas, you remember that when we define a human be a be be being in South Africa, we don't say a human being residing in rural areas is blah, 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 blah. And the one residing in the urban areas is blah, 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 blah. 
human beings, um, as per our constitution, are equal in terms of opportunities and otherwise. So these are the areas that I would also uh, urge the, the, the scholars in this platform to, to, to scientifically uh, inquire on. I don't know if Snedis, uh, uh, you would be the first one to also assist me. In the, I know you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sirisa. Um, as we go back, we, we don't currently have a question. So I have um, certain questions that I have drafted on my own. As we go back into your research, you mentioned that um, South Africa is from of the, it forms part of these treaties um, that are international. But also in your research, you mentioned that um, when, this, uh, when the policy for FCS was implemented, it was nationalized. So for every police station, it was all the same. And I call that a uniform system or a one size fits all system. And my question is, what are the shortfalls of this uniform system or one size fits all? Having looked at Butterworth and East London and understanding that they have a different geographic area, their environment is different, their resources is different. However, they are ruled with the same policy and they are expected to deliver in the same level. Is a, there is in a national, in a policy that is meant to address uh, a problem that uh, that you would say every ge geographical spread is experiencing. I I don't believe that a uniform kind of a model is a is, is wrong. However, there is historic inequality in all areas. The policies are, are, are properly crafted. They speak directly to the problem. However, when it then comes Isa, to the implementation, the very key issue in implementing a policy, which is one of the, the key issues, would be resources. It feels like it's, 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 it's taking a back seat now. And whenever even you'd, you'd, you'd see it, not only in, in areas such as uh, FCS, even in other institutions, you'll, you'll notice that the monitoring and evaluation and so sort is the same, is similar. If, if uh, principal offices are visiting these offices, they expect, uh, the quality of investigation to be the same, whereas the infrastructure is not the same. So these are the problems that come from that uniform policy. The policy itself is not wrong, but what then is wrong is what gives life to the policy, which is how do you give it back? Yes. All right. Um, thank you. Again, when it comes to this policy, I'm looking at book um, Gajane and other areas in Bathaward. And these areas are mostly ruled by um, traditional leadership and all of that. Yes. Do you think, from your understanding, firstly, that the people Uh, I have lost you there. Okay, I'm saying, Mr. Sirisa, um, with rural areas, I want to understand from your um, from your research, did you pick up an understanding from people, especially in rural areas, whether they understand the FCS policy or were they involved in its implementation and drafting? By people, you mean uh, the participants? Yes the participants, not only police um, people, but also the general community, your um, people who at one point fall victim of the situation, understanding that um, communities, especially rural communities, are led by traditional um, authority, 
were they involved, even traditional authorities, in this process of implementing this particular policy? Uh, let, 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 let me be honest, because I'm answering based on the study here. Yeah? The study didn't go as far as probing their involvement, uh, because you'll understand when the policy is, is, is established in South Africa, there are protocols. I didn't get, go as far as that in my study. However, le le let me answer you based on the little information that if, uh, came out of the study. Uh, when it comes to Butterworth, together with East London participants being police officers, uh, they understand. I, I, I want to, 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 to be unequivocal about that. They are best investigators that I have ever met because I have met investigators before. So uh, they understand, they have been trained, they, 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 they understand what is expected of them. However, the areas they work on are, are different are different even because we are, we are mostly, when we talk about FCS, we make a mistake of concentrating only on, 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 on rape cases, but there is this crucial, crucial uh, subcomponent in there, which is called child protection. The police officers in East London are working in an environment where parenting, because of many effects that I would also argue that is a gap for people to also uh, investigate. The, 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 the people in those areas have got a better understanding or even support systems in, 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 in understanding what is expected of a child, raising a child and so forth, and what um, laws uh, are guiding the society to, 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 to take care of children. In the rural areas, you will understand that uh, there are still areas where there are people uh, but there, where there are people who, who have suffered uh, in terms of attending school, formal schooling, and so forth. And also the environment itself doesn't make um, an area, a child-friendly area. So when incidents are happening in areas such as Willow Vale in Dwesa area, for example, incident wherein a child is injured and so on, it takes time for those cases to be reported as compared to urban settings. So those are the other issues that came out of the study. When you compare these two areas, the, the involvement then there of, 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 of traditional leaders, um, they do get involved when it comes to investigation. They play a pivotal role when it comes to apprehending the criminals, especially the, the, uh, the chiefs there in the rural areas. They assist the police officers uh, in Butterworth because at times, uh, even in terms of the directions, the police do call uh, the Royal House and ask for directions. Um, thank you, Mr. Sirisa. Um, my follow-up question would be, um, having grown up in a rural area myself, there is more often than not when there's a rape case, um, there's a child abuse issue, there's always a notion of let's discuss it as a family and that then puts the victim in a very detrimental position my question is what can we do as uh, what role can we play as young people myself included even though i don't have that background in making sure that our communities have awareness about this policy because even myself it was my first time hearing about the fcs and I've had the engagement with a couple of my colleagues. It's the same mm -hmm. issue. So um, there seems to be, I, I can't really say because of my friends don't know that people don't know about it, but there is uh, the, that probability of a lot of people have, especially in rural settings, a lack of understanding of this policy, how does it protect them? And in this situation of the family saying, we'll deal with it 
as a family, it becomes an issue because there are no channels or rather they don't understand the channels of going about um, discussing these issues, even for the victim themselves. Okay, Issa, let, 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 let me give it to both the community. So the South African Police Service, uh, as per my knowledge, is, is, is very ordered. In, this, in the rural areas already, one of the innovations done by, by, by South African Police Services in, in, in our democratic dispensation is to have community-based forums that are called uh, CPFs. These are the people who, who from time to time hold meetings with the police and hold meetings with the communities. And also at each and every police station, you'll find that there is a police officer who is charged with the responsibility of, 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 of educating the community about these issues. What then needs to happen is for organizations that work around these issues, not to work in silos, not to work for popularity. If you have an organization in a community that advocates for, 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 for the rights of women. We expect that organization to collaborate with SAPS, with CPFs, and any other people or an organization or an agency that shares similar ideas or ideology or revolution, whatever you may call it. So for people to know, they need to be taught. And if you teach a person once, then you are making a mistake. It must be brought into our daily conversation so that we understand the channels, we understand what must be done. Some areas you find young women who do not even know what they must do when they have been raped. Some areas you find parents who do not know that leaving a child who is at a certain age alone at night and going to your party and so forth is wrong. So for people to know these things, they need to be taught. And already there is on the site of South African Police Service, police officers who are employed and charged with the responsibility to do, to do that. So our role and responsibility as a society is to also organize ourselves and invite those people to constantly remind us of these ever-changing laws. Um, thank you, Mr. Sumisa. My last question before I move to the other part will be based on what, on, on someone you call, on Mill that you quoted um, on your research, that um, it is common belief in rural areas of Transkei that rape is underreported. It is, for example, estimated that for every 36 rapes, only one is reported. And if this estimate is valid, then Mtata region properly has the highest burden of rape in the world. And my question then will be, the, the issue again we've highlighted is infrastructure, it's um, all these other problems that we've um, highlighted. And you've just mentioned of the role that we can play um, in addressing that. Now, going back to the way our society is structured is that parents sometimes don't want kids to be taught about these things. What would be your message to parents in allowing both organizations and school in teaching them about um, issues of rape, issues of sexual mm -hmm. violence, issues of sex in the holistic manner? Because um, sometimes people don't understand the bordering lines between consensual sex and non-consensual sex. Um, because again, there's silence around the discussion of sexual activities on their own. Oh, okay, Issa, thanks, thanks for this question. You know, Issa, uh, I, I, I don't know, this was said by Ubizo in one of these sessions. Uh, he was uh, alluding to issues relating to what you are, you, are, you, are, you are talking about. I can't remember how exactly, but let me just go straight. When we think that in the rural areas there is poor parenting, I think we'll be, we'll be making a wrong assumption. 
one of the things that came with our democracy is the confusion when it comes to our parents of the role they must play to nurture their children. As a result, they don't know when to say no. They, know, they don't know when to say yes. They don't know how to say no. They don't know how to say yes. Remember, we're talking about people who predominantly come from where they were taught by their parents on how to wake up, how to do a BCD and when to come back home. What time do, you, do, 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 do the lights switch on and so on? I think it starts there. If that confusion is not clarified, we will forever have, be having this question. That's the first thing that I want to say. So if the issue of in my passion is still so confusing in the rural areas, because some of the cases that are reported or even not reported, they emanate from this breakage that is in the family itself who tells who what to do what. You find families where children do as they please. You find families where parents are so harsh to an extent that the child, even when this child got raped, this child is not going to easily communicate to the parent. So these are other issues that each and every household must look into. And especially female children, their whereabouts must be known. Their whereabouts must be known. When your child is exiting your gate, you need to know who is she with, where is she going, what time must you expect her to come back. In our days, we have cell phones. Who are you going with? Can I have the cell phone number of that person? Those are the other issues. And also, unfortunately, in our rural areas, there are no playgrounds. Children play as andongeni na gupinagupi. Those problems still, we, we hardly have even a sound advice for them. You can't tell children not to be children, not to play. And the structure of our rural areas, unfortunately. So this is a call to the leaders that at least try to close this gap. Let the children who are in the rural areas feel that there are also children playgrounds because it is easier to monitor them when they are playing together there other than them playing wherever they please. So th th that, that is my call to the entire society because leaders are parents. They must devise necessary resources in the rural areas as they would also love their children to enjoy. Um, thank you, Mrs. Suiza. But on the other side, um, I, I understand where you're coming from, where you're saying female um, kids or girls must be known where they are, but shouldn't we switch our focus from female to males? Because in half the time, the perpetrators are males. So shouldn't we, our focus be switched to the other side of the coin rather than um, bring, giving victims a burden to always constantly be looking over their shoulders. Thank you, Isa. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> there is a notion that, 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 that has become our culture. Nah. Boys are left to come back home even at 12 o'clock as they please and so on. So there is, there is no control. And, 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 and it is inculcated in their minds that they, 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 they are dominating. They, the masculinity is, is, is enforced, is, 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 is taught at a very young age. So I would say is uh, we need to have leadership as adults, wherein we are able to talk or create platforms to teach our young men how to conduct themselves how to be future husbands and leaders, but there is no such. Again, is I want to say, it goes back to this issue that we as rural people have been stripped off. And if we do not concentrate on this, we'll forever have hooligans. 
Parents are confused, Isa. I don't want to lie. They are confused. They don't know what is right. They don't know what is wrong. And as much as it has been there before that boys were not taught, that is not entirely true. But how they are taught now today, you find boys whose fathers cannot even talk to because they are scared of them. And who are those boys going to listen to if they don't listen to their own fathers? We need to have a talk with them at a tender age so that they grow to be future better men. However, how do we do it if we are still in a country or in a society that is confused between what is of our own and what is imposed to us? That is another question that I pose to scholars out there. Um, thank you, Mr. Suisa. You raised something that is very much have been a conversation even with myself, um, with a friend of mine yesterday, of maybe we also need to track the history um, mm -hmm. of males um, in terms of this inherent violence. And many scholars have mentioned that South Africa was built on violence and rape. And that's one of the fabrics of our society post um, colonization, beginning of colonization, violence and rape became part and parcel of the, of the fabric of our society. Um, the violence that was exacted to our people um, by the British um, and the Buras and the, the different colonizers. Um, but anyway, we're not having that conversation today. Um, the last question I'll have for you, in our communities, uh, we mostly have also child-headed homes. And you find that these kids are being abused. But there's always been a bone of contention as to how do you report rape um, when it's not directly um, affecting you? And where is the boundary? Um, for, for another example that I'll make, if a friend of mine is being abused by their partner, can I just go to the police station and alert them of this issue? Um, how does the whole situation works out? Because half the, most of the time, or some, it's sometimes, you find that the victim mm -hmm. is in this situation but cannot be able to rescue to themselves. Happen, eh? Like, for example, um, child-headed homes homes yeah, and yeah, victims yeah. that are coming yeah. from yeah. if families where there's no structure yeah. for them to be able to report these cases. Yeah, um, Isa, I want you to also recall or always understand the South African police service is not working alone. There is social development, there are community structures. Believe me, you, we've got these structures for a purpose. The mere fact that there is a child-headed family and is not known by social development, that, that is a problem on its own. The mere fact that there is a child-headed family and the community leaders, by community leaders, I mean your CPF committees and so forth, they do not know that there is a child-headed family, is a social problem. These problems must be constantly uh, spoken about by the communities themselves. And I'm telling you, when adults talk to each other, they know the solution. They always find a solution. And the solution is already there. Each and every area has got a social worker that is um, uh, deployed to work in that particular area. And if, for example, this child-headed family is um, having girls and they happen, they happen to be a rape, yes, at times, it may take longer for that rape to be reported because it will depend on their interaction with the community. That is another social problem. Because us as rural people, we are not supposed to be like that, but that's a debate for another day. We're supposed to, to know their struggles and so forth because they are also our children. These are things that were stripped off from us that we will forever treat the symptoms while we do not treat the root causes. So it's difficult to have a, 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 a straightforward 
advice when it comes to these issues. And also number two, you are saying if your friend perhaps was raped, do you have a right to simply go and report it at the police station? That is a legal matter now. Uh, <laughs> that is a legal matter, Issa, but let me answer you based on, 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 on the knowledge I have derived from the research that I uh, normally, when a, a person is already uh, in a legal age, meaning is an adult, the expectation is that that person is the one who must come and report the case because Again, there has been, uh, whether it's dominating or not, there has been instances where even the very, very same victim report a case and three days down the line uh, comes and, 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 and withdraw the case. So imagine now how sensitive it is when you, is, uh, let's say perhaps you are 35 and making an example, you're coming, you're telling the police station, my friend who is also 35 has been raped. I, I, I think it doesn't hold weight until that person is convinced that what is being done to her is illegal and is wrong and there are people to help her. I don't know if I've answered the question. Um, thank you, Mr. Suisse. And yes, we have answered it because of the legal background. Um, because of time, we have exhausted our hour and I would like you to just give us your conclusion on on in any other way you want to tackle it in terms of the topic you were doing and some of the highlights you want to give us before I close. Isa, um, let me thank people who have listened. We need as scholars. Mr. Suiza? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you, Isa. Mr. Suiza? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me call upon all the scholars. We have taken a seat back. I remember when we launched this, um, uh, the, the, these sessions. Uh, the uh, doctor, I, I, I did have a, a comment on that day that we have taken, our scholars are taking a back seat and letting societies be led um, anyhow. We, we need to, uh, to come to the party as, as people who are passionate about writing, about the researching, so that our advice does not lack science. Our advice does not lack compelling evidence. In that way, we will be able to convince each other, those who are charged with the responsibilities to transform the situation in our societies on how we can go about it. So scholars must come to the party. When it comes to the rural areas, I believe even people who are listening, some of them may be in leadership positions. We, we need to talk about these issues, especially in the rural areas. We need to talk about these issues and we need to, to engage our institutions. I don't know when last did I see in my own rural area a, a CPF meeting. Those are the issues. And the police at times will not go and say, establish your own CPF. You need as societies to take charge of your societies and analyze your own situations and seek for solutions. That is one thing that I will say. And I thank the people for the support on this platform. Let's keep the debate going. Rape in South Africa is a serious issue and uh, gender-based gender violence in South Africa is a serious issue. And for, for us as men to take a back seat and think that it's only females who must write about it, who must challenge it, we are then wrong because 
we mostly are the perpetrators. I'm using mostly just to be safe. We mostly are the perpetrators. We need to talk to each other. Fortunately, in South Africa, there are already platforms for that. We do need more writers who are males who come to the party and write about these issues so that we can advise each other better with science and evidence. Um, thank you very much, Mrs. Teresa. And from my side as the host, thank you very much. I apologize for today um, because I was on the road, but that's the reality of being a social scientist that you're constantly on the road. Um, research is never an ending thing. And also from my side, a gender-based violence um, it remains a constant, uh, constant conversation that we need to have, especially now I want us to look at males as victims that's another topic that we need to look at as males as victims in our society in moving forward and thank you very much to everyone who has tuned in and from me it's a thank you from today have a safe weekend sanitize social distance and make sure you're safe um the pandemic is still at large and we have not found a solid um cure for it and our people are dying so please stay safe um, from us, good night. Good night, good night, good night.